Hey everyone, what's up and welcome back to the garden. Long time no video. If you've been around, you know I am utterly obsessed with tulips. I've grown plenty in the past, you know, lots of parrot types and more specifically lots of double types that I am totally, totally in love with. Now tulips, the investment can be a little bit pricey, especially if you're like me and you grow them as annuals for cut flower arrangements, but I think they are just so absolutely gorgeous. Um, they are definitely worth the investment and so I thought I would take you guys around the tulip patch It's not really a garden this year and show you some of the new additions and the new things that we have grown this past season As of this video all of my tulips have bloomed except for one thing which I think is going to fail But we'll go into that um, in another video. It's the bullseye tulips I don't know they're not really doing anything and it's been weeks since the other tulips have faded and passed So your guess is really as good as mine in terms of what's going on with those So without much further ado, let's get on into this and take a closer look at some of these varieties um, I'm so happy that I've been able to harvest some beautiful buckets full of tulips Unfortunately, you know, um, things are kind of halted right now, and I don't have anywhere to donate them. I have been working to preserve them, and I will have a video coming up on that very, very soon. Nearly all the tulips that I grew this season are, in fact, double tulips. Most of them are double late tulips. I have pretty much a very wide range of colors, mostly pink, some oranges, uh, mostly kind of pastel things. A couple items that are a little bit more vibrant and bold and in your face, but in general we kind of play it safe with the nice uh, just soft spring colors here. Uh, also some favorites in this video like the labella pock that you'll see a little bit later. As always, waiting for these tulips to kind of bud up and begin to bloom was I was so anxious the whole time I was so excited I was glad to see that I had a lot of really good growth I didn't lose hardly any varieties to animals this year which was great uh, the first flowers to bloom were the Mount Tacoma Mount Tacoma are very popular tulips they are just this quintessential just crisp white clean double white tulip with a really beautiful um, yellow center uh, absolutely gorgeous. Those were a part of a mix that I purchased. In addition to the Mount Tacoma in that mix were the Angelique double tulips. Uh, I've grown Angelique before. You guys have probably seen them here on the channel before. In general, uh, here in my yard, Angelique opens kind of on the white side and as they age and progress a little bit, they get deeper and deeper. That just light pastel pink hue that is really, really gorgeous. It's really easy to put these in a vase and have some really beautiful flower arrangements. Also this year we had a orange tulip called Orca. Bright orange, like crazy orange. I was very surprised by how vibrant these were, but not disappointed. Uh, just dark orange petals with a little bit of bright yellow streaking. More so saturated in color when they first opened, but as time went on and they aged a little bit, the colors did lighten up and get a little bit lighter and more subdued. I uh, really enjoyed using those in flower arrangements, which you will probably see coming very soon, hopefully. Next up, we have the Levy Tulips. I originally purchased these because I was under the impression that they would be a soft pastel pink. It would turn out these La Vie tulips are hot pink, like, whoa, hot pink, glowing in the sunshine. Uh, I was able to take some photos and videos, luckily, where they weren't so vibrant to wash out their color, but they are very, very saturated, very in your face. Nothing subtle about these at all. I also planted a mix called Pastel Single Mix this year. Uh, I'll show you guys some of the colors you can see. This is not pastel, at least I don't think it's pastel. The little mix included an assortment of colors such as hot pink, bright red with yellow streaks, yellow with red streaks. Um, you can see these are a little bit vibrant. We did get a couple more pastel colored flowers in the range of white and light pink and even some really dark deep purples. Um, but as you can see by, you know, the video here, it turns out that those pastel colors were the ones that had the shortest stems, which is kind of weird. Last fall, I also planted the variety called Brownie. Um, they are in full bloom in this video, and as you can see, I don't think these are brownie. 
I did get one brownie that I think is true to type in this video. You'll see it's a very kind of rusty brown yellow color, but most of these blooms turned out to be an electric orange, just double flower with a little bit of kind of magenta veining around the outside of them. I do not think that these are brownie. There's no reason for one brownie to look this way and the rest of the pack to look completely different. Uh, I think I've been duped, but I guess that's why it was so cheap. The bag I got was so cheap. Next up in this kind of playlist, we have the marshmallow collection that I purchased from Dutch Grown. I am so happy with this collection. It has some really lovely pink flowers, which are Columbus. You can see these are the tulips with the hot pink centers and the whitish cream edges around the edges of the petals. These have hands down become my absolute favorite tulip this year. These are, they're so electric pink and they're so beautiful at every stage. In the beginning, they're so creamy and pastel colored. As they age, they get brighter and brighter. Uh, within this mix also, we had the Mount Tacoma and the Angelique and this Bellica or Bellica, Bellica, I don't know how to say it, which are these white flowers with the pink kind of ruffled edges. Um, I have already ordered marshmallow again for next year. They are seriously so gorgeous. Uh, if you remember last year, I grew Bellica with the Dream Touch series. There's a video on that if you want to see it. Moving right along, we have the Sensual Touch. Kind of a weird name for tulip, um, kind of awkward, but you know, I'm kind of divided on the sensual touch tulips because I like them, but I don't like them. I like the colors. I like the variation in colors. They're very much a orangey, kind of yellowy, pinky type gradation, I guess. Uh, but the fringe, it seems like whenever I try to use the fringe in cut flower arrangements, the fringe is so dominant and pronounced that... I haven't quite figured out how to incorporate them into flower arrangements without them just, you know, absolutely trying to steal the entire show. Also this year we had some La Belle Epoque. If you want to grow these, I suggest that you order them very early. They always sell out. I just grabbed 10 of them, 10 bulbs. They're a little bit more on the expensive side. Um, I guess you can attribute that to the high demand, obviously. As you can see in this video, they are beautiful. I admit, I, at first I wasn't sure if I liked them, but they blend just so flawlessly with so many different colors in the garden for flower arrangements. They are just this very kind of mauve, uh, peachy tone, but within the center there's this dark kind of purple pink hue that I think is really beautiful. And then that in combination with, you know, the dark stamens. I don't know if that's um, using the right word, but the darkness in the center just makes them look so beautiful and so complex. And I've been playing with these in flower arrangements. Hopefully, hopefully I'll get those videos out soon. But this is a winner. I've already, you know, ordered again next year my Labella Pock. So I'm really excited to grow more of those. I ordered 25 for next year. I know I'm like splurging with, you know, the tulips, but uh, absolutely gorgeous. Also from Dutch Grown, I ordered a mix called Peony Party. Now, they're not peonies. They are tulips. They're peony flower tulips, the double tulips like we've been looking at here. This is a mix of Copper Image tulips and Amazing Grace tulips. I did grow Copper Image last year, and I wasn't quite sure how I felt about it. Um, now that this year has come and kind of gone in terms of tulips, I definitely like Copper Image. It's a very subdued peach color or copper, I guess. Um, it's not a showstopper. I don't personally think it is, but it blends so well with so many different other things. And I think one of the biggest underrated tulips in my yard this year was Amazing Grace. Seriously, it is this pink kind of lavender tone. As it ages, it becomes more and more lavender, and it is so gorgeous. It blends with pinks. It blends with salmons. It is I think one of my favorites up there with the Columbus Tulip, I think those are my two favorites this year. It's definitely one that I want to grow again. As you can see in the pictures, I think the Copper Image and the Amazing Grace, they just blend so well together. I even put, you know, just these two in a vase alone by themselves. Put them in a vase together and you look like you know what you're doing. Also in the garden, we had a tulip called Olivia. These are, I thought these would be kind of like the orchid tulips, but as it would turn out, these are much more complex. These were from Dutch Grown as well. 
Um, these are really tight flower buds. You know how some doubles are more tightly bound than others. They have a higher petal count. Um, this Olivia tulip is definitely one with an insane petal count. And there's little teeny tiny bits of yellow in there when they bloom that make it absolutely gorgeous. I'm usually not a person who's real big on, you know, orange flowers and whatnot. But I did really, really like this one. I'm not sure if I would grow it again. I don't know. They looked really nice with a sensual touch um, and a wide variety of other things that I had. Um, in terms of fringe tulips, we also had Brisbane. Uh, they didn't grow very well. The blooms were very small and unfortunately, um, they just, you know, it just didn't work out. Last but certainly not least, we have a couple more and we have the Renown Unique. Tulip. These are a very uh, pink tulip with a lot of different kind of greenish coloration in the middle. These, I don't really like these. I didn't have a good experience with these for whatever reason. They are a very late bloomer, it should be noted, but for whatever reason, they just, you know, they got so tall that, you know, they just fell over. I would say they were almost three foot tall. I don't know why they needed to be so tall. The stems were very weak and I had a lot of trouble with them. So I'm not quite sure I would grow those again. I probably wouldn't. Uh, last but not least is the Victoria's Secret mix. This was just a 10 pack of bulbs with uh, purple and pinkish lavender parrot tulips. They were beautiful, but again, maybe not prolific enough for me to want to actually consider growing again or looking into again. That's really about it for this video. Um, if I did miss anything, I'll put the name of it up on the screen because I am in a little bit of a hurry as I do this because I wanted to get you guys a video out since it has been so long since I posted a video. Uh, but hopefully I'll get back into the groove of things and things will calm down and slow down a little bit here. Uh, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. I'd absolutely love to have you. We're making new videos all the time. It's usually about cut flowers and things like that. Uh, share with your friends. Tell all your friends. All that good stuff. Uh, what tulip was your favorite in this video? I would love to hear all about it. Um, did you grow any this year? Which varieties did you grow? Um, I hope that y'all are having an amazing day. And I'll talk to y'all later. Bye, guys.